Hey guys, Matt here from Rec Brewery. Happy Homebrew Wednesday to you. I'll try to keep these updates uh, short and sweet. I do have a lot of them. And I have some brew day footage for you at the end of this. So uh, I figured I'd give this one a try. This is the Mango American Kolsch uh, by Clown Shoes. I think I showed you guys probably a couple weeks ago. So I figured I'd give this one a try. Let's see what we got. I've made a mango beer before. I was thinking of making another one. So I'm kind of curious to see how this turns out. That is very, very clear. Got a nice finger hit on that. Might get a little bit of a little bit of the fruit there in the nose. Kind of um it's like, a, it's like a citrusy uh, nose to it, so I guess it could be any number of hops. Um, but anyway, cheers. Hmm. A little hiccup there. Yeah, I think I get a, maybe a hint of the mango. It's very subtle. Very clean and refreshing though. So I did a good job with this one. Anyway, a uh, couple of uh, quick updates for you guys, just like I said, so I don't have this video to be really long. So, uh, well, first of all, SJ Pour Challenge. If you haven't registered yet, you need to. You're running out of time. Uh, registration ends on the 2nd, which is only a couple of days away. It's this week. 35 bucks, you get some swag. Um, you know, you get some stuff, uh, some beers mailed to you. Um, not sure exactly how many, but it's going to be probably 12 or so. Usually is generally what it is. I think the last SJ Pour Challenge I was in, you get four, I got 14. So you get 14 of other folks' brews, and most of them are just awesome. I mean, it's great to see what everybody's doing, and it's great to get to get all those flavors, um, you know, sent back to you and just try. It's just awesome. There's just, just no way, better way of putting it. Um, you know, and, and for the cost, it's it's totally worth it. You know, not only do you get your beer judged by your peers uh, to see how you're doing, but you also get to see, like I said, what, what everyone else is doing in comparison. It's a great experience and um, it's a lot of fun. So, of course, I'm in it. I checked my uh, my beer. This is the only uh, sort of teaser you guys are going to get on it. This, this is... This is one of the contenders that I might be uh, submitting. Um, looks like I've hit my final gravity. I brewed this thing, um, what, I guess two, almost two weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago now. So it's ready for secondary. I, I got some stuff I want to add to it. I'm not going to say what, but uh, yeah, it's down to the it's down to the final gravity that it was supposed to get to. It turned out to be a good base for what it will turn into. So, assuming this is the one that I submit, you guys will just have to wait and see what what uh, happens. Uh, let's see, other things that I have. Oh, I got some toys in this week. Um, I'll swing the camera around in a second, and show you them more in detail. But um, ordered some some things from my uh, local homebrew shop. They uh, a couple things uh, came in. And my last piece just finally came in, so I picked it up a couple days ago. I got the SS Brewtech Brew Bucket. I've been slowly turning my uh, brewery into stainless steel. Other things, I got my shipping in from Cal from the Electric Brewery. So more new toys. Um, I bought I bought a bunch of things. I got the panel kit, of course, which I'll show you that in a second. But I also bought bought some additives, uh, add-ons, just to make sure I have everything I needed. I got this. This is the the main uh, plug. It doesn't come with the kit. It's it's something that you add on. It's got the twist lock connectors on it, and I just figured that was probably uh, needed rather than just putting a standard plug in there. I got, all, I got everything is twist lock. I know uh, Spike Brewing when you if you were to buy the Spike system, all their stuff is that way. And I know other folks are doing the same. It's just it's just added safety. 
Um, I did the same with these cables. Now these are the pump cables. Same deal with these, the, the twist lock uh, cables. And then the pump just goes, you know, in there. It's essentially an extension cord at that, at that point. Um, the Riptide pumps are 10 foot cables that they come with. And these are, I believe these are four. So more than enough to go from the panel to uh, the pumps. I also bought these. Um, Got them, you know, they come in all kinds of colors and I didn't really know what colors to pick. I just picked uh, red, blue, and green. These are the temperature um, probes. Um, basically, I'll go ahead and open one of these up. So as you saw before, I got the spike kettles. They're in the garage. Uh, this will just, this is a half inch. Um, this will just screw right into the port that I have that Spike uh, Brewing put together for me. So this goes in there, measures the, the liquid that's in the kettle. I got one of each of these, and then of course the the port there with the wire. I, yeah, I don't want to mess with building these. They come as a kit if you wanted if you wanted to build them, but I figured for the extra few bucks it was better just to have them already made for me. So they've already you know put on the the connectors, put the, these nice uh, grommets on there. You know, did some uh, some heat heat shrinking here with uh, some you know some of the wire uh, uh, protection. So uh, I just figured this is just added safety is something one less thing I have to worry about. But like I said, it cost me like an extra few bucks to uh, to get them to build these instead of me building them myself. Um, the kit, however, there was a major difference in price to buy the kit as a completed kit. So I decided to take the plunge and try to build it myself. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, I have my reservations on it. I'm, I'm nervous about doing it. Um, I haven't brewed, or I haven't built anything in the electronics realm of things since I was in high school. So, but I've been told that plenty of people have built it. Plenty of folks that even have next to no uh, electrical experience have built it. So, it gives me hope that I shouldn't have too much trouble. I do have um, somebody that's in the homebrew club that's willing to give me a hand if I get stuck. I think there's going to be too much in the way of needing for tools, but we'll see, I guess, as we go. Uh, excuse me. I, uh, yeah, so we'll just see how that goes. Uh, and then, of course, we got the brew day footage, which I'll show you at the end of this. So let me go ahead and swing this camera around. So here you go, guys. This is the SS BrewTech brew bucket. I'm sure folks have seen this before, so I'm not really going to do a review on this. might do a little bit better of a, of a description uh, as I use it. But I bought the Brew Masters Edition. It was like $20 more than the standard. The reason I did that was it wasn't so much for the thermometer in the front. It was more for the thermal well. Um, I figured with the fermentation chamber that I have and the Inkbird temperature controller that I have, I could just shove that in there and it would give me a much better reading than what I'm currently doing, which is taping it to the side of the fermenter. Um, so, yeah, a little bit better control there. And, you know, it comes with the bung on there. And I figured I'd probably just kind of set up a a pull-off tube on there most of the time, you know, or an airlock, whatever need be. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty well made, you know, real high-quality stuff here. You know, all stainless steel, which is what I'm slowly trying to do in the brewery. You got your uh, gallon etchings there, so you know how much you got. There's the thermo well. And then, you know, what I like about it is you can turn that, you know, the valve, and it moves the, the racking arm for you. You know, so... Uh, it's just a it's just a great um nice quality of life there so and you know it's, it's the conical so um yeah we'll be able to keep the yeast behind and uh and whatnot so you also have uh you know there's some instructions that it comes with and it comes with a couple of coasters so uh yeah i'm looking forward to using this and then here is the kit so i've already kind of opened this up and took it out of its packaging it comes really well packed and some styrofoam, uh, some paper wrapped in here, just to make sure none of the pieces move around. But basically, I, you know, I, like I said, I opt, opted for the pre-punched pre model because uh, uh, you know I'm not real good with drilling uh, this kind of stuff. And you know, they they really did a good job with this. It's very accurate. It's going to look real professional when it's done. That's the idea, at least. Hopefully, my wiring is up to uh, snuff. But uh, yeah, it was just one less thing I had to worry about. I think it was an extra fifty bucks to get them to punch everything out. You know, they put the holes in the top there for the uh, you know, for the heat sink. So uh, yeah, it was just 
extra peace of mind. I didn't want to spend the extra, I think it was $1,000 to have it created for me. So this will just um, be something that I can work on slowly and go through. But all the components are in here and it's, uh, you know, it's ready to get started. So. All right, guys. So that's that. Uh, this video is probably already way longer than I wanted it to be. So I'll go ahead and close. But before I do, uh, one of the other things I wanted to just mention real quick is um, the watermelon wheat beer that I brewed. So uh, it was aiming for 1060. I think I ended up with 1050 or so. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's you know it's something that works works out really well every time I make it. Everyone loves this beer. This is the first time that I've done it down here in the South with better water. And the first time that I've done it obviously with any type of uh, water treatment. So I kept the water profile pretty low across the board. Um, so I didn't really add a whole lot to it. And actually what, what's kind of nice is um, I'm starting to get a feel for how the acid, the acidulated malt is kind of working in my, in my regard. I've learned that somewhere between like the two to four ounces is probably good for most of the beers I've done. I haven't done a darker beer yet and treated it, so we'll see what happens on my next stout. Um, but this beer, uh, I did five ounces of acidulated malt, and I did overshoot the mash pH by a bit. It did go down to 5.11. Um, so I think if I would have done maybe four ounces, it would have hit, hit just fine. So I did, I'm still feeling that out. I'm still feeling out um, pickling lime. That's the other thing is pickling lime is very, very strong. So I've learned my mistake the first time. This time I only put in a quarter of a uh, yeah, quarter of a teaspoon, half, which is a half a gram of it. And that was enough to, to fix the issue of the pH getting too low. So it's just, it's just trial by error, right? It's, it's, it's all fun. It's brew science, you know, and I just keep notes as I go and just getting better at the craft uh, each time. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I have for you guys this week. Enjoy the brew day footage, which is to follow. And we'll see you next week. Cheers, and have a happy homebrew Wednesday, everybody. And get into that SJ4 challenge. Your time is running out. I want to see you in there. Cheers. All right, it's brew day. Watermelon wheat. Currently mashing. Doing the recirculating right now. Just started the mash. And we'll check the mash pH in a minute. <coughs> Alright, so we're a little low. 5.11. I'd like to be at least 5.2. So I just stuck a half a gram, which comes up to about a quarter of a teaspoon of um, pickling lime. Because I wanted a little more calcium anyway. So this will hopefully pump me up slightly. So I know that stuff goes really far, so you don't want to put too much in, because otherwise you'll make a huge impact. So let's see what a quarter teaspoon gets me. All right, and this, my friends, is why you are, use the pickling line very, very sparingly. Um, yeah, so went from 5.11 to 5.32. And uh, that was with just adding a quarter teaspoon of pickling line, which was uh, roughly half a half a gram so yeah and <clears throat> while I'm waiting I started laying out my boil burrow love this thing so yeah got my additions there it's not very much in this beer it's just a uh, an ounce of Mount Hood at the beginning and of course the uh, the usual 15 minutes to help the yeast out and uh, aiming for 1060 so and actually this came this came today, which is good timing. I couldn't find it at my local homebrew shop, so I had to order it online. This is the uh, watermelon extract that I add in at bottling. Very small amount, maybe about an ounce. Just enough to preserve the watermelon juice flavor that comes out of the watermelon. But yeah, we're uh, 20 minutes into the mash now. We've got it all dialed in where we want it. 149. So yeah, just let this rock and roll. And now we are sparging, just trying to match that flow rate. Got a nice, maybe inch above the grain bed. Just uh, 
but you see the boil pedal. Nice clear work. Nice golden color. Pale golden color, which is what it should be for this beer. Of course, when I add the watermelon to it, it's going to turn pink. <laughs> but. Oh, the fun part. Cleaning out the mash tun. Isn't this everybody's favorite part of the brew day? It isn't mine. <laughs> okay, we've reached our nice rolling boil. I'm going to go ahead and add in our 60 minute hops, which is one ounce of Mount Hood. Okay, we're getting to the end here. We've got 15 minutes left, so we'll go ahead and add in the yeast nutrient. And whirl flock. Okay, now we are whirlpooling. We got near boiling work going through the chilling for sanitation purposes. Got a nice strong whirlpool going there. And uh, yeah, again, the hop spider's really nice dual purpose. I have it sitting at the bottom of the kettle right next to the port. Um, the drain port, so that should catch whatever else might be coming around there as it's whirlpooling. Worked last time, so hopefully it works again. I see why not. And uh, fermenter is on on deck, ready to go. All cleaned out, sanitized, ready to receive some nice new wort. My, my speedle is uh, in use still. This is from the SJ4 Challenge beer. Sitting right around 68. And uh, still got some airlock activity in there. Can see it bubbling a little bit. Very nice. Let's see, I brewed that uh, three days ago. So, yeah. Can't wait to see what that turns out to be. Alright, we've been filling up the fermenter. Almost to the five gallon mark. Brewed about six. It's going to be kind of close, but uh, this is the only fermenters I have available right now. I actually think I like this method a lot better. Um, I whirlpool for 15 minutes, and then rather than letting it sit, I just went straight into the fermenter. But I let it whirlpool while it's uh, cooling down. So I kind of worked out nicely. It's really hot here again today, but even with the the heat. That's pretty much groundwater temp. So yeah, got it right down to there. So we're filling this guy up here. Didn't quite get the gravity I wanted. I love this this mat though. I'm gonna be transferring all this stuff over to my book when I'm done. But um, yeah, we ended up getting 1050. And just for curiosity's sake, the pH going into the fermenter is now 5.47. So, I guess that's alright. It's going to drop during fermentation, so... Look at that. That's just eight hours later. After the start was pitched. <laughs> nice.